Hi everyone, so today I'm going to tell you guys how to differentiate between doing a substitution and elimination reaction and how the actual mechanism functions. Um, this is very important in OCHEM considering um, these two plus addition reactions are probably the most pertinent to OCHEM 1 and 2. Um, it'll help you synthesize products, retrosynthesize products. Um, there is a lot you can really gain from learning this well. Um, so without further, further ado, here we go. Hi guys, so today I am going to explain the difference between substitution and elimination reactions. Things to note about E2 and SN2 reactions is when they can occur. They are both bimolecular reactions. E2 would prefer to occur when there is a strong base and a weak nucleophile. One of the best examples of this would be something like, best type of example of something like this, that's both a strong base and a weak nucleophile, would be something like DBN, possibly DBU. Um, terbutoxide. On the other hand, an SN2 prefers strong nucleophile, which makes sense since that's the thing causing the reaction to undergo, in a weak base. So a good example of this would be something like sodium iodide or sodium bromide. Basically any of the halogens um, after sodium except for fluorine because that one's too reactive. SN2 can also prefer a strong nucleophile and a strong base, a little bit more than E2. However, if you get something like this, you'll probably have a mixture of both products. So that's something you have to keep in mind as well. So first we're going to start with an elimination reaction. Essentially an elimination reaction is a reaction that occurs when you use a strong base. The mechanism for an E2 reaction requires a strong base and it is a bimolecular reaction. Essentially, a base comes by and deprotonates um, a hydrogen that is beta to um, the alpha carbon, which would, for this instance, be this one, beta hydrogens. This causes the bond between the hydrogen and the carbon to be transferred over to the bond in between the carbons and the loss of a leaving group, in this case, a halide. We therefore see a double bond between our two carbons rather than three substituents per carbon on either side. And then of course, the following material would be the protonated base and our leaving group. On the other hand, a substitution reaction occurs when use of a good nucleophile is used. Something that makes up a good nucleophile includes something that is small and preferably charged. An example of a good nucleophile would be NaOH. However, there's a caveat that this is also a good base. The basic mechanism of an SN2 reaction includes a carbon with a good leaving group on it. In this case, we're going to use just an arbitrary halogen. Essentially, it happens in a concerted step where a nucleophile, aka something like an OH, attacks the carbon from the backside while the leaving group leaves and ends up changing the stereochemistry of the um, product because this can only occur through a backwards attack. 
So this is a review of the two reactions I just stated. Elimination, specifically in E2, requires a strong base. It deprotonates a beta hydrogen and produces an alkene as the product. Substitution reaction, on the other hand, requires a good leaving group and a nucleophile. A nucleophile attacks the carbon in question, causing the leaving group to leave and, um, and leading to the substitution of the nucleophile onto the carbon in question. I hope you learned something new today. And if you have questions, let me know.